Starting with the most liked commander of the guard, and possibly in the entire clone army, Fawn is of course infamous for his last stand against B2 and BX commando droids, and this has given him a rather mixed reputation. On one hand, his soldiers were killed, gunships blown up, and his command ship destroyed, at the expense of a few scrapped B2s. This short engagement ultimately had little effect on the invasion of the planet by the CIS, but for the GAR, this story of Fawn and his soldiers defiant on that landing pad on Scipio would become one of the legendary tales of bravery of the entire Clone Wars. And it would not just motivate other acts of gallantry during the war, but would become a legend that inspired future generations. Unlike other commanders of the Guard, Fire began his career in the GAR as a lieutenant, where he was seen assisting Master Yoda. This unit was most likely the diplomatic escort service, but we will come back to that in a minute. We don't know what Fire was doing during the years 22 to 19 BBY, but he managed to get promoted to the rank of commander and got closer to the Chancellor by the time of Order 66. He then led the lesser known Coruscant Guard attack on the Jedi Temple and attempted to eliminate Yoda, the Jedi who had once saved him. Then he went to Mustafa with Palpatine and helped save Darth Vader. Although Fire contributed much to assisting the death of the Republic, he was just following orders from the Chancellor, and in his mind was doing his duty for the Republic. What are your thoughts on Fire's career? Was he a loyal soldier of the Republic, or did he ensure the downfall of its very democracy? The Coruscant Guard commander everyone forgets, even other experts, <coughs> Geatsleys. But Stone is more than just the forgotten one. His only appearance is the 12th episode of the first season of the Clone Wars TV show, where he makes quite an impression, being the commander of the diplomatic escort service. He was tasked with protecting Jar Jar Binks, and was to deliver a ransom to Hondo and Oka. The operation was a great success, even with Jar Jar's misadventures. Unfortunately, we don't know much about what happened to Stone after this mission, but it's safe to assume that he stayed in command of the diplomatic escort service and served in a similar role for the Empire. Before we move on, I must confess my personal affection for Stone. I see him as the competent officer who has to deal with ludicrous situations and has to work under idiots, but gets the job done and doesn't complain. We have covered Fawn the Loved, Fire the Loyal, Stone the Forgotten, and now we have Fox the Hated. At first I thought that may be an overstatement, but when you look at the community's opinions on this, it might not be. I don't have to explain Fox much to you. We all know him very well as the chief in command of the Coruscant Guard, in charge of the entire corps, and to his credit, was always seen on the front line against crime on Coruscant. But his dogged devotion to orders makes him very dislikable, notably his killing of Arc Trooper Fives. I personally think the arrest of Ahsoka was reasonable, especially as he even says he doesn't blame her. It is also easy to forget Fox's triumphs, capturing Zero the Hut, and as far as we can see, effectively running the most important unit in the Grand Army of the Republic. So I think it's time the community reevaluates its relationship with Fox, even if he was killed by Darth Vader. What are your opinions on my descriptions of the Coruscant Guard commanders? Is there anything you disagree with? Please let me know in the comments.